Okay guys, let's take a start with essay writing and today we are going to learn the first essay type. Uh, this essay type is advantages, disadvantages essay. Uh, there are four main types of essays. Uh, and what I'm going to tell you now, you should have these four main types of essays uh, on your fingertips. Fingertips means if the essay type is advantages, disadvantages, how many paragraphs? Number one. Number two, how many sentences in each paragraph? And number three, what are those sentences? Sentence number one is this, sentence number two is this, sentence number three is this, and all that. So you should know all these things. And then after that, you must learn all 12 tenses. You can repeat them. In essay writing, mainly we use present tense. So you don't need past. And at times, if you are predicting, then you need future. But mainly you need present tense, one thing. Second thing for IELTS, you don't need actually present continuous tense. Don't write anything in present continuous tense. Use present simple tense. Otherwise, you can use present perfect and all that, right? Before we continue, whenever you write, uh, you need to just consider four things. If you please the examiner, you will get good band score. Sometimes you work very hard to get low band. You'll say, how? <laughs> I got a good example. One of my students appeared in IELTS, got six band without preparation. He said, okay, without preparation, six? I'll do preparation. He watched several videos, 50 words to get eight band, 20 phrases to get nine band. He learned everything. He appeared in IELTS with full preparation and he got 5.5. You understand? 5.5 he got second time and then he was, sir, men pe case karunga and all that. So IELTS does not need your high five vocabulary. Don't stuff your writing so that examiner will see one word and you will get good bench score. It's not like that, right? Sometimes your natural style, your natural writing style, the way you write, that brings you good bench score. One of my students from uh, uh, Morocco, he got eight band. I will share his writing with you. He's written very, very well. Then there is another lady uh, originally from Iraq. She's living in Canada. She got eight band in writing and she shared this thing that be your natural self. The way you are, just write in that way. You should have understanding of the type of the task and how many paragraphs and all that. But don't copy the sentences that, okay, I know this sentence. If I use a plethora of this, and if I use this word, I'll get good bench score. Examiners are sick of all these words and all these phrases. So be your natural self. Using anything in the essay, like if I put this, then the other band will increase. Not at all. Be your natural self, right? So the first thing is task response. When examiner checks your writing, and when even I will check your writing, tomorrow you have your mock test. So when I check your writing, first of all, I will take a look at task response. Task response means how thoroughly you have covered the topic, right? Thoroughly means you will discuss the topic, expand the topic. In a minute, we'll talk about these things. So how thoroughly you cover the topic, that's what we call task response. Task response also means that for writing task one, you write minimum 150 words, and for writing task two, minimum 250 words. Task one, 150, task two, 250. So this is we call good task response. Your writing is according to the topic, and according to the word count. And I advise you to write 180 for task one, 180 words, minimum 180, 190. Sometimes some of your words are out of word count. For example, there is a cramped sentence that will be out of word count. There is an irrelevant sentence that will be out of word count. So therefore you need to write more. At least if two to three sentences are out of the word count, still there is enough to check and all that. After this task response, the second criteria is grammatical range and accuracy. I give you this challenge. Until Sunday, you guys are going to learn two major type of sentences. Number one, compound. And for compound sentence, you can just write F-A-N-B-O-Y-S. Write it down. F-A-N. 
capital, all capital, F-A-N-B-O-Y-S. Just go to YouTube and write there compound sentences, fanboys. Now, fanboys are all conjunctions, right? So they will teach you how to make sentences. If you only make sentences with fanboys, F for for, A for although, right? N for neither. So you can, you can just practice that all. So if you only learn this thing and then you make a compound sentence. Compound sentence means they should be minimum two sentences joined together, maximum three. In the eyes of examiner, compound sentences always give you better band score. Right? As I told you yesterday when we were doing speaking. So this is what we call grammatical range. And second part is accuracy. Now what is accuracy? Your spelling should be correct. Your grammar should be correct, even punctuation marks, only two punctuation marks, and one of those marks you know very well, full stop you know. Now the second one is comma. I have a handout, I'll share that with you, 21 rules of comma. In case if I forget, you can text me in the group, 21 rules of comma. I'll share that handout, so you can just go through it, two, two pages or three pages, and easily you can learn about that, right? So, uh, grammatical range and accuracy. Now, the third thing is lexical resource. They call it vocabulary. Now, this is where many students have misconception that if I use difficult words, if I use words out of the way, those words will bring me good band score. Remember, for lexical resource, the key is relevance. Relevance. Whatever the word you are trying to use, you are not forcing the word in your essay. Right? Like, you know, yesterday I asked you a question about another thing and then somebody was forcing something else. Yeah, my cow be smidal dunga. Yeah, my best friend can say lagake and I'll do that. Never force any word. Never try to make a base. Ke is base pe ye wale teen char words lag gaye na, kamal ho jayega. Those words will never bring you good band score. Uh, I'll show you what a good vocabulary is. So lexical resource or vocabulary. For that, the key word is variety of words or synonyms. Examiner will see the synonyms. Now, for example, you write an essay on crime. Or we have a topic like here. Uh, there is an essay on what are the advantages and disadvantages of leaving your country to live or study abroad. Now, leaving your country to live or study abroad. So you need to see leaving your country. For leaving your country, you can use the word immigration, migration, move out of country. For other country, you can use foreign country, European countries, Western countries. Right? These are the synonyms actually. So you should use a variety. Study abroad. For study abroad, what, what else can you say? Foreign studies, studying in another country, foreign universities, foreign education, higher studies, exactly, international education, studying in, huh? Post-graduation, Post but you need to use any word that relates to, uh, it to foreign studies. So these things are important, variety of words. You know what happens? Very simple. You have to demonstrate your language skills in front of the examiner, right? If you demonstrate low band skills, they'll give you low band, very simple. If I write an essay on foreign studies, and my sentence is, foreign studies are really very important. I think youngsters from the poor country should go for foreign studies. Foreign studies can bring you many benefits. If you go for foreign, foreign studies, foreign studies, foreign studies, I'm showing them in itna sahi aata hai. So when itna sahi aata hai, to itna sahi band bhi aayega. Right? So if you use a variety of words, synonyms, okay, rela related to that, don't, don't force any word. Force means ke ye word to maine lagana hi lagana hai, kuch bhi ho jai. Right? Yeah. So you should just see that. So this is the third criteria. And the last criteria, and by the way, all these criteria are equal to nine band. Right? When you get your mock test result, you will understand it better. Because I'll give you uh, your feedback uh, according to all these four criteria. And wherever you get low band score, you should know that this is my area. I need to improve that. So the last criteria is coherence and cohesion. 
two things, coherence and cohesion. It means your ideas should be well connected. Your ideas should be linked together. It's not that one sentence is about East, second is about West, third is about North, right? So all the ideas should have a logical sequence and I'll teach you that. Don't worry. I'll just tell you in your body paragraphs how you can attain that logical sequence. So this thing is called coherence and cohesion. So these are four criteria. Number one is uh, task response. Just write capital TR. TR is task response. Number two, grammatical range, GR. Grammatical range, GR. Number three, lexical resource, LR, LR. And number four, coherence and cohesion, CC. So you need to consider all these four things. And by the way, today I'll show you all these things. And one more thing, uh, you know, some mothers, when their children uh, come up to the age when they should get married, so the mothers have matrimonial eyes. There is a song also, matrimonial eyes. Eh, kinna di kuri Right or Ekinana Munda, something like that. So in order to get good band score, you should have IELTS writing eyes, not matrimonial. Yeah, some children even have matrimonial eyes. Anyway, so you should have eyes that whenever you look at the essay, you see, okay, let me see task response. Mm, good task response. Now you see next thing is grammatical range and accuracy. So if you observe, by the way, whatever you observe, your subconscious mind absorbs. You observe and your subconscious mind absorbs and whatever you absorb, you produce that. Very, very simple. So if you don't observe, I say read one essay, you read it. You say, okay, yeah, fine. What, what's there? And if I say read this essay and carefully look at all these four things, underline those things that, okay, this is good grammatical range. This is a conditional sentence. This is a compound sentence. Right, this word is saying this thing, this is good vocabulary. If you observe, your subconscious mind will absorb and you will be able to produce such type of language. Writing needs time to develop. It's not that I tell you and you say, thank you, sir, my writing has improved. No, it'll take time. It's just like cooking. Today you cook biryani. Not that good. Second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time and finally... Your, you know, that's your signature biryani in your family and all that, right? Anyways, coming back to the uh, topic, page number seven, please. Advantages and disadvantages essay. Uh, now, please come to, I mean, you're on this book, page number seven, and you have to come here, the last line here. So, uh, the topic is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of leaving your country to live or study abroad? Now look at me. Whenever you read the topic, it's very common. What do the students do? They always, 90% students write wrong essays. How, how, what's the percentage? 90%. You know why wrong essay? They pick up a word from there. Now the topic is what are the advantages and disadvantages of leaving your country to live or study abroad? You ask them what's the topic? Study. Education is key to success. If we do not study we this and we that and all that, it's not like our education system that first what is corruption? Yeah, then you give a good quotation about corruption and then you proceed from there. Not like that, right? So the first and foremost, an important thing is interpret the topic. Whether you interpret it in Punjabi, in uh, Urdu, in Hindi, or whatever the language. Okay, so we go on. Uh, now we are going to learn how to interpret the topic, which is very, very important. You know, when you read the topic, you decide this is the direction, right? And then uh, once you decide this is the direction, then you have more thoughts about it. So if initially you take the wrong direction, your brain will give you so many wrong ideas and then you will go into that side, right? At least if your essay is according to the topic, still you can get a reasonable band score, right? Yeah. Now, let's see. Uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of leaving your country to live or study abroad? Leaving your country means to go to a foreign country. Live means it can be immigration, it can be work permit, 
It can be for five years, 10 years, and study abroad means for education. Now you need to think, okay, what are the benefits and what are the drawbacks if I leave my country, right, for five years or for education, what are the benefits? Now tell me, benefit number one. Benefit number one? Better lifestyle or? Better environment? Okay. Resources, okay, and? More opportunities. Good culture there. Yeah, you like the culture, huh? Okay, Munda Kaneda Chale, culture vasti. All right, and then you reach there and they say, Chai, to sorry, Punjabi. Ne. You will find Punjabi culture, right? Some people go to Canada and they improve Punjabi. Yeah, and they come back and they speak Punjabi and all that. All right, so it can be like uh, educational benefits or it can be career opportunities. Right, one benefit is that, second benefit, you earn international degrees, if it is education, right? So, what are the disadvantages? Language barrier. language barrier. If you don't speak English, or if you don't speak the language of that country, it doesn't mean only Canada, it can be France, Germany, Spain, any other country like that. Language barrier, second. Homesickness. Sorry? Homesickness, yeah, you miss your family, then you're always calling. Minu, minu, betak vahao. Yeah, then they go everywhere and then they show him all the house and all that. The poor guy, huh? Who is just all alone there and the wedding is going. Have you seen in the wedding, one person is holding the mobile and showing. See that? Yeah. And there he's just watching, holding a cup and thinking, right? But anyways, once you reach there, then you will get to know. Uh, all right. Homesickness, language barrier, culture shock or things like that. Clear? So you will come up with two advantages and two disadvantages and it's necessary to think about the topic once you understand the topic. Don't just start thinking immediately. Yes, right. Only two, disadvantages. two advantages and two disadvantages are more than enough. You're writing an essay, not a book, right? And total word count 250 minimum, 300 words are more than enough, right? Okay, now I want you all to come to these bullet points, please. these bullet points here. Write an introduction to the topic. Got it? Paragraph number one. You can write there in pencil, paragraph one. Write an introduction to the topic, paragraph one. Think of two advantages to the situation and provide clear examples. In a minute, we will see how to provide clear examples. Two advantages only, not more than that. Don't stuff your essay. I wrote 10 advantages and 20 disadvantages. They don't need that, right? There is one thing which is called development of idea. That brings you good bench score, development of idea. Next, think of two disadvantages. So that is third paragraph. First paragraph, introduction. Second paragraph, advantages. Third paragraph, disadvantages. And fourth paragraph, conclusion. That's it. All right, now. <clears throat> No, 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 no. Now we are only discussing advantages, disadvantages. So minimum, there are four paragraphs and maximum six paragraphs. It depends on the type of essay we are writing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, now please come to page number, oh, okay, note down a few pages, please. You can do one thing, come to this content page. Content page. Unit number one, <clears throat> market unit number one, and unit number four. Right? Unit number one and unit number four. You have to read these two units. Clear? Unit number one and unit number four. These two units will teach you everything about advantages, disadvantages, essay, language, vocabulary, grammar, everything. Unit one and unit four, right? Now, please come to unit number four. What's the page number? Okay. Yes. 
So the topic is quite a uh, likely topic. Uh, I'm here on this uh, page. Here is the topic. Let's read this one now. Different topic. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of working from home. Uh, yes, one more thing. By, by the way, you have to develop another ability that in the first three seconds, when you read the topic or take a look at the topic, you should identify which type of essay is that. And it's very simple. Whenever there is advantages, disadvantages, they will use the word advantages, disadvantages, benefits, drawbacks, and all that. Right? So the first thing is you identify that. And students usually have confusion between opinion essay and discussion essay. Sometimes they don't understand. When I teach you those essay types, I will explain all these things. Right? But for now, advantages, disadvantages, benefits, drawbacks, positive, negative, or any word like that they are going to use so you can easily understand that. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of working from home. Now just think, working from home, working from home like we are doing now, you're doing your job online and you don't go to the office, you're managing your work from home and all that, working from home. Advantage number one, you don't have to shower every day. <laughs> Advantage number one, please. No transportation. You don't need to go anywhere. All right. Time saving. Now, listen, whatever you say, you need to mention it very, very clearly. Time saving in terms of what? If you only are yeah, traveling is the thing. So never write anything abstract. For example, if I say, what are the benefits of working from home? And you say, it's good. Sir, it's very good. You're working from home. Excellent. See that? Abstract. You should come up with the reasons. And you should know the reasons. So reason number one, no transportation. You don't have to dress up every day. If you're working from home, you don't have to dress up every day. If you're working from home, you don't need to follow 9 to 5 schedule. Right? What are the disadvantages? More disturbance. The door opens and somebody comes at tomatar te lekki ana. Yeah, not comfortable environment. At times it's noisy. Okay? Lack of professionalism. Or you cannot meet your fellows, the team spirit and all that. Right? So listen, whatever you come up with, it should be logical and it should be convincing. Don't come up with any abstract ideas in the air. Abstract means like it's not something clear. Your ideas should be very, very clear about the topic, right? Okay, now let's move on to page number... Page number 48, please. Uh, okay, now see here they have given some space. Right there, I will write an essay like this. I will write an essay like this. Means you will develop your language skills and then you will write an essay like this. And then you have to follow that also. Not after a year you say, hey, 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 I wrote there and I never followed that. Okay, so you should follow the things you write. Okay, now listen. Uh, whenever you write introduction, now I'm telling you the sentences, number of sentences, and these things should be there on your fingertips. Number one, the first sentence is always a general sentence about the topic. And by the way, we've, we've got two to three ways of writing introduction. At times we write two sentences, at times you can write three or you can write four. Now you will ask me which one is right. All are right. Right? In two sentences, the language that you write, that really matters. So two or three or four, they don't really matter, right? But the way you write, that really matters. So sentence number one is a general sentence about the topic. If the topic is studying abroad, you can write these days, a vast majority of uh, students and professional uh, go to foreign countries for a significant period of time for this and that reason and all that. 
right so the first sentence is a general sentence about the topic now you can practice some general sentences on the topics second sentence is what we call paraphrasing the topic paraphrasing means apne word mein topic ko bayan karna paraphrasing the topic or we use the word rewording the topic ki jo bhi topic hai abhi batata hu sara dikhaunga don't worry question mark nahi aana chahiye mu pe abhi sara i'll explain that after this uh, the third sentence is what we call your thesis sentence very important thesis t h e s i s agar ye word mushkil lagta hai to likh le plan p l a n plan the third sentence is your thesis sentence or it is your plan now this third sentence will tell the examiner that you have understood the type of the essay and you are on the right track or the wrong track okay so these three sentences should be learned number 1 general sentence about the topic number 2 paraphrasing the topic and number 3 your thesis sentence or you can call it your plan plan sentence right uh now please follow this essay over the last two or three decades by the way whenever you write general sentence you can write something like over the last two or three decades or you can write at present or you can write these days it's up to you over the last two or three decades the way that business is done has changed dramatically due to major advances in technology do you understand what's the topic the topic is discuss the advantages and disadvantages of working from home and now we've got this covid situation so you can put that as well if you want to so do you understand this first sentence now can anyone tell me uh business is done which tense is that business is done present simple passive voice right present simple passive voice has changed which tense present perfect tense active voice dramatically is adverb due to major advances in technology now the second sentence as a result a growing number of people are now choosing to work from the comfort of their home now this sentence is what we call add an other sentence to support the first one by the way when you write introduction you can write two sentences minimum three and then four maximum if you write four first sentence is general sentence second is add another sentence to support the general sentence and third is paraphrasing the topic and fourth is your thesis but three sentences are perfectly fine you can write three okay now let's see as a result a growing number of people are now choosing to work from the comfort of their own home however is this development positive or are there more more drawbacks than advantages what is that paraphrasing the topic and by the way they have used question mark at times when you want to highlight something you convert it into interrogative mode and then you can just ask a question so however uh is this development positive comma and one more thing make a habit whenever you read anything read comma also whenever you read for example if i read this i read it like that however comma is this development positive comma or are there more drawbacks than advantages question mark when you do that again absorb observe observe absorb and then you produce that so you should read comma because comma is very important in ielts comma and full stop these two punctuation marks are important next in this essay i will explore now sometimes some essays will use this in this essay i will explore this is also right or in this essay i will find out i mean just you can write something like this it's not that exactly like this you need to write something like this in this essay i will explore the pros and cons in the question they use the word advantages and this now at least you should know two different words for advantages because you will write two body paragraphs and two different words for disadvantages and this is what we call vocabulary lexical resource lr right So I will explore the pros and cons of working from home and try to draw some conclusion. Now look here. 
Why are we writing advantages, disadvantages, essay by the way? To conclude whether advantages are more or this, and you should be clear about that. Usually students ask me, sir, this is not opinion essay. Then why are you asking us to write opinion at the end? Opinion means advantages are more or disadvantages are more, right? So you should be clear about this thing as well. So there they say, try to draw some conclusion. Okay. Next paragraph, please. Uh, now, this is introduction. Are you clear about it? Minimum two, then three, then four, and you have to practice. And do another thing. You can just practice like that. Uh, I just want you to write this last sentence. I will explore the pros and cons of working from home and try to draw some conclusions. Please write it on your copy. Now. Just write this sentence, copy it. I just tell you a way how to practice your grammar. If you do this, you don't need to learn grammar in detail. Written? Okay, now I give you a minute and I want you to modify this sentence. What are the advantages and disadvantages of going to a foreign country? What are the advantages? Topic is, what are the advantages and disadvantages of going to a foreign country? This sentence ko modify karke ab uske mutabik likhe. Yeah. In this essay, I will explore the pros and cons of अब मैंने बोला है एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ गोइंग टू अ फॉरेन कंट्री इसकी जगह पे वर्डिंग चेंज करें एंड देन राइट अ सेंटेंस ये बेनिफिट्स एंड ड्रॉबैक्स ऑफ गोइंग अब्रॉड राइट और लीविंग योर कंट्री राइट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड सो क्या करना है व्हाट यू गाइस हैव टू डू लाइक इन इंट्रोडक्शन एडवांटेजेस डिसएडवांटेजेस ऐसे there are three sentences write them down separately write one sentence on top of the paper and then try to write five to six sentences like that this is the easiest way to do it then write second sentence go on just try to pick up another topic and write second sentence accordingly then third sentence again i'm telling you number one you should be clear how many paragraphs number two you should be clear how many sentences in each paragraph and number three what are those sentences and number four you should practice like that then you can write a very good essay you'll get very good bench score because you'll copy otherwise learning grammar will take a lot a lot of time and energy but if you do it like this you can easily do that now please come to next paragraph I will start by looking at the advantages. This is for coherence and cohesion to guide the reader that we are going to start with advantages. So I will start by looking at the advantages or you can use the word benefits instead of advantages. One of the major plus points now, one of the major plus points, steal this phrase from here, keep it in your mind. Whenever I will write, if they give me advantages, disadvantages essay, and I'm writing first body paragraph, I'll consider that. Make your own template, right? For only advantages, disadvantages, this is my plan. For other essay type, this is my plan and all that. You understand? Yeah? But you have to do it. I mean, if you just uh, listen to me now and you say, okay, it will be improved now, no. Practice. Practice will make you perfect. Okay, uh, one of the major plus points of working remotely. Can someone tell me what is the synonym? Uh, uh, like this working remotely is the synonym of what? Working from home. Now for home, they have used the word remotely. If throughout your essay, you say working from home, working from home, working from home, you'll get low band score. So you told the examiner working from home can also be described as working remotely. Uh, working remotely, uh, one of the major plus points of working remotely is the fact that you do not have to commute to work. So, advantage number one is you do not have to commute to work. Uh, some common students will use the word travel. Travel is not appropriate. Commute means to regularly travel from point A to point B and then point B to point A. Now you guys are commuting to management house. 
I commute to management house, right? So travel is another word. Travel is you go to northern areas. You don't go regularly. It's there. Okay, uh, millions of people worldwide have to deal with rush hour traffic. Now this is what they are expanding the idea. First you present, and by the way, in one paragraph, only one idea. Do not give several ideas in one paragraph. Only one, one main idea, one main advantage, and that is commute. You don't have to commute. Now, throughout this paragraph, you will develop this idea. Developing the idea means you will expand the idea, number one. Number two, you can give example if you have, right? And when you give example, don't give personal examples. Don't say, my younger brother my father, my uncle, no. Just give general or generalized examples, right? That's important. Now here they say, millions of people worldwide have to deal with rush hour traffic. Try to feel the difference. My uncle has to deal with rush hour traffic every morning because he works in an office. Essay is formal piece of writing. And by the way, your essay will be marked by an examiner who is not from your country. Right? It, your essays will not be marked here. They will be marked uh, if it is British Council in England, London. If it is uh, AU, uh, uh, IDP, then Australia. Okay? So you have to write for international examiner, not for the local examiner here. Sorry? Examples should be given like global examples, international examples. Now this example, they did not say anything about the country. They said millions of people worldwide. So this is a global example. Uh, worldwide have to deal with rush hour traffic. Now rush hour traffic to make their way to the office. Obviously, comma. Now this is for coherence and cohesion. Means you want to make a point clear. When you say obviously, that means you want to make a point clear. Obviously, this is not necessary if you turn your home into your work uh, into your place of work. So working from home, turn your home into your uh, place of work. Is that clear? Now can anyone tell me how many sentences are there in this paragraph? Hmm? Three sentences. And these three sentences are compound sentences where minimum two ideas are connected. So this is what you need to follow. And what's the first sentence? Introduce the benefit. Second sentence, explain the benefit, or maybe you can give example. If you have no explanation, you can give the example. And then in one sentence, you can conclude that very thing. So in body paragraphs, you will write minimum three, maximum four sentences. Clear? And again, you can practice body paragraphs like this. Next, secondly, now secondly is for coherence and cohesion, that this is my second point. Secondly, working at home, gives you much more freedom to manage your working day. What is advantage number two? Freedom. Right? Freedom to manage your working day. For example, now they have straight away given an example. You can do that. Sometimes you can, and by the way, example is not must. It's optional. If you have a point to elaborate, you can go on. Otherwise, you can give a relevant example. So, for example, if you work in an office, Comma, you are often asked, which tense is that? Present simple, active voice or passive voice? Passive voice. You are often asked to attend meetings, comma. Now this is a compound sentence, focus. Meetings, comma, and then and, and then second sentence. So this compound sentence is quite common in IELTS. And your timetable is decided for you. Timetable is decided, which voice? Passive voice, present simple tense. Uh, this is not the case when you work in an office at home. So what is the second advantage? Freedom. All right. On the other hand, now on the other hand means if first you are talking about advantages, now you are going to talk about disadvantages. So you must write something like that. On the other hand, however, like that. On the other hand, it can be very easy to get distracted if you are in your home environment. Disadvantage number one, distraction, or you can get distracted. Now, this paragraph will not talk about anything other than that. You will define what you mean by distraction. And this is what we call, uh, 
this is called development of the idea, right? So, uh, okay, for instance, comma, now if you are using the word for instance, first you used for example. You understand the whole mechanism, how thing is going on? For instance, it is extremely tempting to turn on the television, comma, go and relax in the garden or make a personal phone call. Clearly, before that they said, obviously. Now they are saying, clearly. Clearly, these distractions will dramatically reduce how much work you produce. And, and uh, okay, now from here, we have the next paragraph. This is the mistake in the book. They have mixed two paragraphs together. So please draw a line before another. That's the next paragraph. So another major disadvantage of working from home. So you can write another major. Try to add some words like that. Otherwise, you can write another disadvantage. But if you write another major drawback of working from home, another crucial drawback, something like that. Try to use adjectives and powerful adjectives so that your points are highlighted. Anyways, another major disadvantage of working from home is that people have met much less contact with their colleagues. Disadvantage number two, less contact with your colleagues. This can make them feel cut off. Now, a good word, cut off. This can make them feel cut off Comma, despite the extra freedom they have working from home. What's more? Now, they have written what's more. And can you see it's a contraction? In IELTS essay, we should never use any contraction. So just cross what's more and write there additionally, or you can write furthermore, comma. Additionally, comma, or furthermore, comma. Clear? So what's more, daily contact with people at work is often how good friendships are made. Clear? See that every sentence elaborates a point, no repetition of same idea. So this is what you guys need to follow. Now we come to conclusion. So I told you before, the purpose of writing advantages, disadvantages essay is you need to decide advantages are more or disadvantages are more. So you can write to conclude, or otherwise you can write in the final analysis to summarize, whatever you write, that's perfectly fine. It's not important what you write here. It is important what you write after that. After to conclude, but if you write a good sentence, that'll give you good bench score. To conclude, there are both positives and negatives to this way of working. Instead of working from home, they have used this way of working. Sometimes you don't find a word. This is what we call paraphrasing, right? I, I don't know how to say cup. And I say it's a container which is used to keep hot drinks inside. Means cup, right? So uh, they have just done this thing, uh, negatives to this way of working. In spite of the fact that, now you can copy these sentences, in spite of the fact that, and then you will describe, it removes travel issues, disadvantage number one. In conclusion, now you will give the summary of two advantages and two disadvantages. So you can just write, in spite of the fact that it removes, and then disadvantage number one, that is travel issues, and gives us greater freedom. Right? So these are two advantages. Travel issues it removes. And, great. and by the way, you know, if you only write travel issues, we are not clear what you mean by that. But if you say it removes travel issues, now we are clear about that. So never write anything which is not clear. That will go against you. Okay, it removes uh, travel issues and gives us greater freedom. Uh, many people find it difficult because of distractions at home. What is that? Disadvantage number one. At home and feeling isolated, that is disadvantage number two. So in one sentence, we've got this summary of two advantages, two disadvantages. And again, I tell you, when you read all the essay, ho sakta hall When you read one paragraph, ho sakta hai But when you write one sentence, 
focus and write five sentences like that on different topics then write second sentence from introduction then third sentence ek ek karke sabko maar de kathe nahi kathe kahenge na english chedda vadda aise ye to summary nahi yaad hui thi us waqt to ye kaise yaad hoga yaad nahi karna alag alag sentence likhe focus kare kya hai kis tarah se hai kahan pe comma aa raha hai us tarah ke sentences banane seekh le this is the shortest cut शॉर्टकट नहीं कह रहा शॉर्टेस्ट कट अदरवाइज राइटिंग के लिए जितनी चीजें चाहिए सो इट विल टेक एजेस टू डेवलप योर राइटिंग सो दिस इज द डायरेक्ट मेथड शॉर्टकट मेथड एंड डील विद एवरी ऐसे टाइप लाइक दैट ओके नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू कम टू ओपिनियन नाउ यू विल नॉट आर्ग्यू वाई आर वी गिविंग ओपिनियन दिस इज नॉट ओपिनियन एस ए बिकॉज आई टोल्ड यू पर्पज ऑफ एवरी एस ए इज टू गिव योर ओपिनियन पर्सनली आई बिलीव it is important to keep work and home life separate to find the right work life balance so what does that mean working from home is not good this is the conclusion right working from home is not good how many sentences are there in conclusion just count full stop from full stop there are three sentences so again when you write these three sentences separately and you see this is the first one this is the second one this is the third one and then you practice writing more sentences like that you'll be very very clear about it is that all clear now listen tomorrow for your mock test i will give you advantages disadvantages essay so you have to prepare it at home ye ek aise kam az kam pura ek template bana ke practice karke whatever the topic is you can use the style and everything so overnight or tomorrow morning you can do that all you will get advantages disadvantages essay in your uh, mock test and the units kon kon se bataye the unit number 1 and 4 isko padhna ye baad mein pad lijiyega abhi ke liye ye aise pad lijiyega all the style the way it is so that you could get good bench score in that right